Hello everyone, this is Manisha Nadar and uh, I'm here to answer the discussion board questions for week one. So the first question is, did Henry Goddard use qualitative or quantitative research in studying morons? Was there a random sample? So Henry Goddard did not use a quantitative research uh, study because um, quantitative is where you measure and intelligence cannot be exactly measured on like meters or ounces or anything. Human brain weighs 2.65 uh, pounds and that's not different for everybody. That's the average weight of human brain. So it's not possible to do an intellectual test quantitatively. So, did he use a random sample? No, he did not. Random sample is used um, when you have a small population and it provides better results um, to avoid biases, pretty much. But uh, since his test, uh, as it was said in the podcast, he was one of the very few uh, or very first uh, child psychiatrist at the time. And the test he used was also not the very best version of the IQ test that he used. So uh, his research uh, was mostly or solely qualitative based. Second question, imbeciles, idiots, and morons. According to Henry Goddard, who was better able to pass as normal? So when we look it up now, uh, all these words, imbeciles, idiots, and morons, they all mean as a stupid person, according to Wikipedia. So, if his, uh, if Henry Goddard's research had been very accurate and was theoretically and practically proven right, in today's world, I'm assuming that moron wouldn't have been an offensive word. But uh, according to Henry Goddard, at the time, since the word wasn't as familiar, he used imbecile as uh, someone as below average and um, someone who's idiot to be uh, who has an IQ of somewhere between 50 to 80, which is again not the normal or average IQ uh, acceptant. A person of moron, according to Henry Goddard, had the IQ of a, a, a adult who had the IQ of an eight to 12 year old is what he referred to as moron. So they passed to be as close to be a normal person. The third question is, how can one family create two different family trees that had totally different social life outcomes? Is that nature as in something inside of the family members that cause their outcomes or nurture as in something that the family members are taught that causes their outcomes? Uh, from the studying that I have had and from the personal life experience and family and friends around me, I have learned um, that nature and nurture are both vitally important. So it's like saying a person could have combination of two parents who have very high intellectual, like very, who have genetics with a good intellectual academically or athletically and the kid being left in a poor neighborhood can be deprived of his chances to prove what his um, genetics have for him so genetically this person can be really capable of a lot but he may he or she may lack the ability to prove it because they are not in the right environment. The same way a person can come from parents or generations who do not have as much of uh, high intellectual genes or athletic genes, but they could be put into a nature or a, a situation 
where they are trained and pushed to the best of their ability and just repetition itself can make someone um, better at what they're doing so put in a uh, atmosphere where someone is forced um, to master some skill there are chances that a person who may have never learned that skill ends up being really good at it so both nature and nurture plays its role equally a plant can be seeded but it has the genetic abilities to grow on its own but then again it has to be watered it has to be taken care of it has to be nourished for it to become a full grown blooming plant the last question is how did social conditions at the time of the release of the book help to make it popular so according to the podcast at the time uh, america was a country that was to become one of the great nations in the world and it also had a lot of immigrant people moving into the country so this was giving this was challenging the country's chances of becoming the great nation and they had to uh, come up with a way to make sure that that does not get compromised so proving a theory where uh, people could be genetically be imbecile and that could affect the nation's growth uh, I believe probably supported in um, the political people believing that they have to bring a law where they can protect the nation from having a big amount of imbecile population. Thank you.